Hi there, this video is going to show you how to quickly find the vertex of a parabola. Remember a parabola looks like this and the vertex is this spot right here where it changes direction. Okay, and it, we usually write the x value and the y value. Okay, and that's our vertex. So how could you find the vertex very quickly if you are given an equation, a quadratic equation in factored form? It would look something like this. Okay, well um, I don't know if, well, I don't need to get into it quite yet because I'm going to get into it on the next page. But this is what factored form looks like, and I have a video I just made before this on factored form, standard form, and vertex form of a quadratic equation. But in this video, we're just focusing in on the factored form and figuring out how could we come up with the vertex if we're given this. Okay, so in the factored form, um, a, this value right here, it tells us which direction the parabola opens up, either up or down. See, a parabola could look like a frown like this, if this was negative. Um, S and T are called the zeros, so they are the spots where the parabola cuts through the x-axis, okay? So this is going to be, and sometimes, well, sometimes we don't have two zeros, okay? Sometimes we have one and sometimes we have none, but I'll talk about that on the next page. The last thing it says here is to find the vertex, we use symmetry. So we're going to find, basically today, we're just going to figure out how to find this spot in between the x and these two x-intercepts, or the zeros. We're going to find the middle of them, and we know that straight down from here, that's going to be our x value right here. We're going to find that. Then we'll sub it back in, and we will be able to find the y value too. But let's practice that. And before we do, just remember that a parabola either has two zeros. Most of our examples will have two zeros. There's two right there. Sometimes it has just one zero. This, this parabola is coming down and just touching right there on the x-axis at negative two. And then there's parabolas up here that never touch this x-axis at all. So they have no zeros. Okay, no zeros at all, sad. Okay, so let's practice a question, or two. So here we go. This, this uh, quadratic equation has been factored for us, and all we have to do is figure out what is the vertex. So here's what you do. You make the y equal to zero, because what you want to do is you want to find the roots, you want to find, not the roots, you want to find the zeros where this parabola would cut through. So there's two possibilities here. If x was 0 and 0 times all of this would be 0, so x could either be 0 or x could be, if x was 10, 10 minus 10 is 0 as well, so if x was 10 that would make this whole thing become 0 as well. So we have 0 and 10. Those are our two zeros from up here. Now, in order to find the vertex, what you want to do is find the halfway point between 0 and 10. What's the halfway point? Well, just the rule is you just add them up, 0 plus 10, I know it's simple, and then divide by 2. Cut that in half and you get 5. So the x value of the vertex would be 5. If you had to find the y value, all you have to do is plug the x value back up here. So 5, I'll write it right here, times 5 minus 10. What is 5 times 5 minus 10? Well, 5 minus 10 is negative 5. So what's 5 times negative 5? Negative 25. So if you were to, to graph this, and if you use Desmos right now, and you just type this in Desmos, you should get 5 and negative 25 as your um, vertex. I almost feel like I should quickly do that and show you. Here we are, and I'm going to type it in. I think we had x and x minus, was it 10? Let me just go back and see if that is what we had. Yes, we did. And let's go look. Let's drag this up. Here's the vertex. Let's just click on it. Look at that, 5, negative 25. There we go. I'm not going to do this each time but I just wanted to show you that you can use Desmos to help you, okay? It helps us verify that what we're doing is right. 
Let's do the next one here. So what would the zeros be in this situation? Well, if x was 0, it'd be 0 times all of this, which would be one of the zeros. And what's the other one going to be? 30 minus what would give us 0? Well, 30 minus 30 would give us 0. Okay. Now, if you added these two up, to find the middle between these two, add them up. 0 plus 30 is 30. Divide by 2, you get 15. So what would the y value be so we could find the vertex? Just plug 15 here and here. 30 minus 15 is 15, and 15 would also be in the front. So it's like saying 15 times 15. And if you don't want to do that in your head, just go 15 times 15, and you get 225. So that is our vertex for this parabola right here. Let's look at another question. Here we go. So what are the zeros in this situation? All you have to do is look at these two brackets. So x minus 2, what would x have to be to make this inside the bracket be 0? Well, if x was 2, 2 minus 2 would be 0. So 2 would be one of our answers. And the other answer would be, well, something minus 8. Well, 8 minus 8 would be 0. So we have 2 and we have 8. Okay, do you remember what to do? To find the vertex, add these up. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we know that the vertex would be at 5. What would the y value be right here? Well, all we have to do is plug 5 in here and here. Um, so 5 minus 2, I'm going to write it down. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 8 is negative 3 and we have a negative in the front. So it's like saying negative 3 times negative 3. So now we know negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. If we graph this on using Desmos right now, we would see that the vertex is at 5 and 9, I hope, unless I made a mistake, which sometimes happens. <laughs> Let's keep going. This question here, what would the zeros be? Well, x plus 3, well, if x was negative 3, that would be one of the zeros. And the other one is 2 minus x, so 2 minus 2. So negative 3 and 2, add those up. Be careful, this time we have a negative sign. Negative 3 plus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. Divide that by 2, and you have negative 1 half. Or you could say negative 0.5. OK? Not as easy to work with, but let's Let's just uh, write it in here. Negative 0.5 plus 3 would be 2.5. 2 minus negative 1 half, that's like saying 2 plus 1 half, or 2 plus 0.5, would be 2.5. OK, if we multiply these out together, by the way, let's just write out our x value is negative 1 half. What is our y value? 2.5 times 2.5. All we have to do is quickly, uh, you could do it in your head or you could do it right here, times 2.5, 6.25. Or 6 and a quarter. It depends how you want to write it. You can, you can write it as a decimal or as fractions, but I just chose to use decimals up here to make it quicker. And then I went back to a fraction down here just to make it look good. But this could have been negative 0.5 and this could have been 6.25. And this should be what the vertex is. Do I have any more questions? Well, just some further thoughts. Some parabolas don't have zeros. We already talked about that. So they can't be in factored form in the first place because they aren't factorable. So you won't have a question from a teacher that's in factored form that isn't factorable. It has to be because otherwise it wouldn't have been able to make factored form in the first place. OK, that may have been very confusing. but. Let's move on. <laughs> Some parabolas in factored form will have fractions for the zeros. We just saw that. This will make the process slower than desired, definitely. Sometimes I change them into decimals just to work with them quickly. Lastly, a parabola with just one zero would look something like this. Okay, it would look something like this. So that's a parabola that would just touch down and touch the x-axis at 3. Okay. And if we had to know the, um, the vertex of that, well, it would touch down at 3, 
and the y value would be 0 because it's just touching down right at 3. 1, 2, 3. Here comes the parabola. It just touches down at 3. I just drew a mini picture of it. Or it could look like this. I, don't, I think most textbooks would show it this way though. This is what it could look like alternatively. Okay, I hope that hasn't been more confusing than necessary because generally I like to make things clearer for people, not worse. Math teachers can sometimes have a bad rap because if we don't explain something well, people tend to hate the subject and it's not fun. So I apologize if I messed anybody up and hopefully for the rest of you, you're happy. Take care, everyone. Have a good day.